Hey guys, it's the Ghost Team again, and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm really excited because I'm going to continue the videos with augmented reality and eye tracking. In a previous video, we implemented eye tracking technology. I show you how we can apply basically a mesh and use those meshes in our eyes to get the rotation and also the position from AR kit. In this video, I'm going to show you how we can use basically a head model, which is the monster that I used in the previous video. But this time we're going to be using the position that the monster has for the eyes but we're going to be updating the rotation based on what ARKit is telling us to update. So I'm going to be adding that to the eye tracking manager and I'm going to give you all the details that you need in order for you to implement that. So let's jump into Unity and I start working on it. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go into Monster Blend Shapes. I'm going to go ahead and clone it. And what I'm going to do on this one, I'm just going to call it V2. And we can double click on it. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go into our AR Session Origin and I had a Gunan with Ice. We can click on that. What I'm going to do on this one, I'm just going to clone it as well, because we're going to be doing... And, and the reason why I'm doing that, if we if we double click on this one, you're going to see that this has the AR eye manager. I don't want to change this one because I want you guys to be able to test this one. What I want to do is I want to implement new changes on a new one, and then that way the previous scenes are going to work just fine. All right, so then what I'll do here, I'll just assign this V2 to this game object. I'm also going to go into File, Build Settings, and then just add this as an open scene. And we can just uncheck this. That way when you guys get to it, you guys can update it and actually build it to your device. Okay, so now that you have that, I'm going to go ahead and focus on Gunan with the eyes v2. We're going to look at him, right? Right now, there's really no eyes in here. And, and the reason we don't have eyes is because I was using the, the component that I have in here, which is going to actually instantiate it and put it where it's detecting the face. Well, I don't want to do that because we want to use the mesh the mesh position on the eye. So if we go into the eye, let me go ahead and back, get back. If we go into the eye, there's going to be a position here that the mesh had. So we're going to keep the position of the eyes relative to what the mesh had, but I'm going to be updating the rotation based on what AR Foundation gets from AR Kit. All right, so how do we start? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to also clone the AR eye. Let's go ahead and clone this one. And we'll just give it a second here. Okay, and this one I'm also going to call it V2. And let's go ahead and hit enter. And when we do that, we're going to be just assigning. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this guy here and I'm going to put it right here. And it's going to grab that eye and then basically place it at that position. It's not going to look right to begin with because we need to make a couple changes. And we actually need to make it a lot bigger than, than what it is right now. Because it looks like it's just, it's just way, way tiny. So let's try, I think I did six, six and six. Then we can just do that. And then the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the rotation here. It's going to be just zero. And just don't worry about it. Just trust me that it's going to look okay. I already tested this. Looks like if I do zero, it's pointing down. But I tested it with this model and it works. It works just fine. Okay, so now what we need to do is I need to do the same thing on the other eye. And I'm actually going to unwrap this completely. And what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and clone this one. And then we'll just go ahead and put it in here. And there we go. And then I'll just remove the the distance that it generated on the x-axis. And then we don't really need this guy, but I'll just leave it in there just in case. Okay, so now we have the two eyes and they're positioned correctly. So now what we need to do is we need to go ahead and work on the implementation. So I'm gonna go ahead and go into my ARI manager, double click on it. And we're gonna have to add a couple of features that are going to allow us to override the, the eyes that are getting instantiated. We're going to still instantiate the eyes, but we're going to be using just the rotation. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new property, and this property is going to be private. And I'm just going to call it pull bool, and it's going to be copy rotation from eyes, copy rotation from eyes, which is basically what we're going to do, and I'm going to just set it to false. And I need to serialize this because I want to, you know, I want you guys to be able to use to basically set it through the inspector. So it's going to be serializable. Then the next thing that I'm going to do is I need to know which eyes, what prefabs we're going to be, well, what game objects we're going to be updating the rotation on. So I'm going to need a private. It's going to be a game object. This is going to be the left eye replacement. So I'm just going to call it left eye replacement. And then I normally want, I normally don't do this, but I've been doing this recently, just setting it to null to begin with. Otherwise, the the Unity console is going to start, you know, complaining. So it's, it's always good practice to have an initial value. And then on this one, I'll just do the right eye. Let's go ahead and do right eye. Okay, so 
Then the next thing that we need to do is we also need to, now that we know what the prefabs are gonna be, we're gonna, we're gonna have to update the rotation. So I'm gonna add a new method to do that. It's gonna be private. Then I'm gonna do void. This is gonna be apply. We can just call this one apply copy. If I can type copy I rotation. And this one is gonna be called from the update. However, we're not gonna be calling this on every frame because I tried that and I had a lot of, a lot of issues. So we're just gonna, I'll just, I'll just show you what we need to do at that point when we need to update every, you know, I'm gonna do milliseconds. So every five milliseconds, we'll just do an update or every, you know, every 50 milliseconds, we'll, we'll just try it. Okay, so I'll just do, I'll just check to see, okay, if the copy rotation from my is currently set and the left eye replacement prefab is not null. So I just wanna make sure that everything is set before we do this. So I just do, do that. So if this is true, we need to go ahead and update its rotation, right? So how do we do that? We just simply do a yeah, replacement. We can grab the transform, we can grab the rotation. And then what I can do is I can grab the rotation from the AR face. So, but I'm gonna be using nullable here just in case we don't get, you know, we don't get a left eye and we don't get the, basically the AR face, it's null. It's always good just to make sure, that way I don't have to do, if this is null, do this, it'll just do a nullable operator on it. Okay, then I'll just get the rotation, but if this is null, I'll just set the quaternion to identity. And then I'll do the same thing here for my right eye. And also the same thing here for my right eye replacement. Okay, so, so far so good, but we're gonna have to add a timer and a frequency. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. So the first one that we're going to be doing, it's going to be the frequency. This is gonna tell the system, you know, how frequently we're going to be updating the basically the, the rotation. So I'm gonna call this one I, let's see, we can just call it I update frequency. It's gonna be a, a flow, update I frequency. And then this one I'm just gonna do, just do five milliseconds, five milliseconds here. And then I'll do the same thing with the timer. We'll, we'll need to give it, you know, a meaningful name. So just do private flow. And this one is going to be the I update timer. I update timer and it's gonna be zero. This one we don't need to expose it because it's gonna be just an internal internal timer that we're going to be setting in our method right here. So the first thing that I need to do is I need to update my timer. I'm just gonna say time that delta time. So we're gonna be incrementing that. And then what I need to do in order for us to check for that, I'm just gonna say, okay, if the timer is less than the update frequency, then I'm gonna return. But as soon as we reach that, we're going to be updating basically updating our rotation down, down here. So I'll just do the update, update I frequency and then return. So if we, you know, if we increment the timer, if we're be beneath that timer, then we're gonna be returning. Then as soon as we reach the frequency, which is gonna be, you know, the five, the, the point zero five F, then we're going to be executing this code right here. And then obviously we're gonna have to set our timer here, otherwise it's going to, you know, it's going to keep executing and we don't want to execute that on, on every on every frame. And then I'm just gonna say reset timer. And this is gonna be a comment just for us to remember. Then we need to call this guy from, from somewhere, right? We need to call it from the update method, which I don't have. So you say void update, and then we can just do a ternary here because we're not gonna have anything else in there that we're gonna have to execute. So, so far we have the left eye replacement, right eye replacement, we, we added our timer and frequency, we added our method that is going to update the rotation on the eyes, and doing the left eye, right eye, and also, you know, getting that from the AR face. And then we're also calling it from the, from the update method. So, that, it's all good to go. I don't need to do anything else in here. So that should fix the, the issue where, you know, people were, were telling me that the eyes weren't getting set at the right position when they were using the monster. So, but the next thing that I wanna do is, if I wanna test this, I want to have some sort of a toggle, that way we can see this model material, you know, be transparent. So that's what we're gonna be working on next. Okay, so now that we have that, I'm gonna need to add a new, let's go ahead and add a new UI component here. And it's gonna be a canvas. And we can get close to D here. And then if we go back to the game, we can actually change this to be, I like to work with the portrait 
on the iPhone XS Max because then it basically aligns the aligns the canvas correctly. And then what I'm going to do here, we're just going to add a new label. This one is going to be, well, actually a button is going to be TextMesh Pro, which I like to use a lot. And then let's go ahead and enable the gizmo so that we can see everything in here. And then what I'll do here on this guy, let's do 320, 40, I think it's a good number. And then we'll just go ahead and center it on the bottom. We can do perhaps 300. And you might say, Dilmer, how do you remember all these? Well, I don't. I done this a lot of times, so I do remember. We can just do 350. I just want the button to be a lot larger. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use, it's going to be opaque on, it's going to be the default. So this means that we can actually just do, yeah, I think we can do capital letters, that's fine. So the way that it's going to work is, let me actually change the sprite too. I don't like the, the little edges. So the way that it's going to work is we're going to allow them to change this from an opaque material to a transparent material. So it's going to be basically just a toggle. We can change this to be perhaps let's do 40. I think 40 is fine. We can test that this is going to fit. Okay, yeah, this, this will fit. And then normally I type this in lowercase and then I just enable, let's just do that. And we can just do opaque on, there we go. And then because we're using uppercase, it just updates. All right, so that so far so good. And if we go back into scripts, we're going to have to create a, some sort of a toggle. So I'm going to call it the face mesh material toggle. So let's create that and then go into scripts. We can do face mesh material toggle. And then what I'll do is I'll go ahead and assign it to this guy here. And I'll show you why that is. Go ahead and assign it there. Perfect. And now what we need to do is let's go ahead and implement it. So I'm going to go ahead and double click on it. Okay, so we have the, the face mesh material toggle open. Let's go ahead and do a couple of things in here. We're going to need an enum here to actually change the surface material. So I'm just going to go ahead and do, we're going to need an opaque one. And I'm also going to need one that is transparent. And this is because I couldn't find that the shaders ha had a built-in material surface type. So by doing this, it's going to say zero or one because it's using an enum when it converts it to a flow. I'll show you how that works. And then I'll just do a serializable fill here. This is going to be a material. This one is going to be the opaque phase material. And then remember when, when I say that we need to initialize them to null, otherwise we get complaints. We basically get warnings. And then this one is going to be our transparent material. Awesome. But I also need the button, right? Because we need to bind that action. So I'm just going to need another serializable fill. It's going to be material. Actually, it's going to be a button. And looks like I need to be bringing in the namespace here, control period. And let's do that again, because that was the wrong namespace. That happens when you talk too fast and you're typing at the same time. You tend to make a lot of mistakes. So, okay, and then I'll do the same thing here. It's gonna be, it's gonna be null. And then I need to keep track of these toggles. So I'm just gonna call it opaque is active. And it's gonna be, by default, it's gonna be true because we want the material on the face, on the faces to be basically to be to be opaque to begin with. So that's what I'm doing there. And then I don't think we need any of this, at least not yet. So now what we need to do is we're going to need an actual meta to be able to, to swap those colors and also to keep to change the label that we're going to display on the button. Because if we go from opaque to transparent, I want people to know that opaque is on or opaque is up. And then this is going to be a toggle here. Let's go ahead and do that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say, it's going to do an auto operator. This is just, uh, you know, pra a pretty good practice of doing a not. So it's going to be, if it's true, it's going to set it to false. If it's false, it's going to be set it to true. And it's going to be the button text. I need a reference to that because we need to change the toggle button text box. And that we're going to have to do the, we're going to have to get a component in children. And I hate how that is named. I always say that because text, text mesh pro call these, I just hate that name. It's just really hard to remember. Text Mesh Pro U GUI, uh, which I mean, it's a great asset, but I really don't like that name. Okay, so then the next thing that I need to do is I'm going to check, okay, if opaque is currently active, then I'm going to say, you know, I'm going to say the text. Otherwise, I, I will say the text to something else. So here we're just going to say bound text. And then we'll just do text. This one I'm just going to say because if it's, if it's true, I'm going to say opaque to on. And then otherwise, I'll just set it to off. 
Okay, and because we have capital set on the text box, they should all be uppercase. And then what I'll do is I need to get a reference to all the heads on the scene because if we have, for some reason we have multiple heads because we're tracking, we're using, we're using actually more than a, a number one. Let me show you what, what I'm talking about. If we go here and you look at the AR face manager, you can tell the AR face manager how many, how, how many faces you want to recognize. If we go back, you can see that I have the maximum count right now set to one. But if you had two, let's say you want to capture two faces, then this code should also work with, with the two, meaning that we're gonna change the, the head material to transparent or opaque, regardless of how many heads we have. And I need to add a tag, so just remind me of do, doing that. And remind me like you guys were live, right? <laughs> I tend to say crazy things when I'm, when I'm coding. So voice switch is gonna be switch material. I'm going to be getting uh, basically an array of game objects. This is gonna be all, all the heads that we're getting and I need to specify if the if isopack is active. So it's gonna say isopack. We can just change, just do isopack, I think it's fine. And then what I'll do here, I'll just do a for each and then we'll just loop through each one of the heads and heads, perfect. And the head has a, a skin mesh render, it doesn't have, have a, mesh render so just make sure that you know that when we're doing this I just say let's actually call this head mesh render or you can call it what it is head skin mesh render and then what I'll do here head and then get component and then we'll just need to get the skin mesh render that's that's so that I can get the material out of it so now what I need to do I need to get the head skin mesh render and then I can say okay what material I'm gonna be setting you to I can do an equal and I can say is opaque. If it's opaque, then we know that we can just basically assign the opaque face material. Otherwise, we're going to be assigning the transparent one. Awesome, so now what we need to do is we need to call this from here, right? We need to switch the material depending on the state of that variable. So I'm just gonna say, well, I need to pass in the heads and then I need to say opaque is active. All right, so just kind of like a walkthrough, this is going to be the, you know what, and I thought I was, I was using this, I wasn't, I did this because I was changing the sh shader and it turned out that it didn't work so I went through and changed it to, to have two materials instead. Anyways, I don't use that anymore, just know that, that it's no use and we can get rid of this. So we have our opaque material, transparent material, or toggle button, opaque is active, we have our toggle here and then we're switching basically the material on the heads that we are identifying. Okay, so let's go ahead and go back here. And now we need to assign the materials. So if we go to materials right now, and we look at the, the face, I think I have one for the actual, the actual gun on. So if we go here and we click on the head mesh, you're gonna see that this one is called skin. If we select material, this, I'm just gonna clone this one. This one is going to be opaque. So I'm just going to call it opaque. And then this one is going to be my transparent transparent and we're gonna be assigning the transparent and then what I need to do if we go back I need to assign those right so it's gonna be the opaque is gonna be assigned to the opaque the skin transparent is gonna be assigned to that and then we also need to bind the toggle button which is going to be this one and that will cover everything that we need to do and it looks like I have an error here let me clear it out okay let's go ahead and test it and see if this works and we can see that the default material is not the material that I want it to be the default, but we'll fix it. And also the opaque on and off is not working. Let me go ahead and fix that and I'll show you what we need to do. Okay, so first let's take a look at the Gunan with eyes and make sure that the default material is currently set. I also didn't assign the AR, the ARI manager, so we need to do that. Let's go ahead and assign that. This is gonna be the one that we need to update. So the left one is gonna be assigned to the left one. And then the right one is going to be assigned to the right one. And then I also need to enable copy rotation from. So make sure that you set that. The other thing that I wanna check is going to be the skin opaque. This one is supposed to be opaque to begin with. So make sure that you do that. Then I'm going to increment this. And then the other one, if we go and look at the material here, select. This one should be transparent. So it looks like it's already set to transparent. So we should be good to go. Let me go ahead and go back here. And then the last thing that I need to do is if we look at the button here, well, it, there's a reference to a button, but the button doesn't really know where the, where the method is. So we need to go to the button here, which I'm actually going to re rename to toggle. And make sure that you do two Gs. Okay, toggle button. I also need to bind the on click. 
And then remember I put the, the method in here, so we're going to go and assign this. Face mesh material toggle, and then toggle. Now let's go ahead and hit play and see if it works. And give it a second here, and we can see that now it has the opaque. The eyes though, the eyes are not, are not correct, but let me see if this is working. The last thing that we need to do is we also need to go into our prefabs here and go into the Gunan with eyes and make sure that you go into the head mesh and assign this to head, otherwise it's not going to work. And I said that I was going to remind you and I that you were going to remind me, but obviously you're not here so you can't remind me. Okay, so that looks good. I think we have everything there. So now what I'm going to do, let's go ahead and hit play and see if this is going to work. Okay, so we have the eyes are looking kind of weird. I think the rotation is off, so what I'm going to do, which is cool because I'm using a remote editor, and we're going to go into our pivot here, our head mesh, and let's take a look at the, the eyes. I think the, the rotation that I gave you was incorrect. Let's do 90. Okay, so it, it is 90. I had, him, I had him wrong. And if we go back here, and then this one is going to be set to 90. And now if I move my eyes, looks, it looks like they're tracking correctly. If I change the opaque, material. Looks like the, the opaque options are not working, so I'm going to look at that and see why that is. So the first thing that I want to do, let's go ahead and fix the rotation on the Gunam here. So we're going to go into eye color. This one is going to be set to 90, and then eye color underscore one, also 90. So that should take care of that one. We also need to make sure that our tag is assigned correctly on, on the head. Looks like I did set it. Let me go ahead and look at this and make sure that it's set correctly. So it looks like it's set now on the head mesh because the way that it's going to work is this is going to be, we're going to be searching for this, basically this game object, and that's how it's going to find the material. I think that's why it wasn't working. Let me try that again and hit play. And we can see now the eyes are looking right and the, this is looking great. So it's working, I'm really happy. And if you guys have any other questions about this, please let me know in the comments.